Along the Mississippi River in the south central United States lies a geological hazard known as the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Unlike the other seismic zones on the west coast, this zone isn't associated with the plate boundary. But what makes it so unique and possibly active? Let's find out. In the winter of 1811 and 1812, a series of powerful earthquakes shook the New Madrid, Missouri area. All of the earthquakes were estimated to be more than a 7 on the Richter scale, with one being estimated as high as 8.6. Nevertheless, these earthquakes were the most powerful ever to hit east of the Rocky Mountains. The earthquakes were so strong, they were felt as far east as Boston, where church bells rang. At the time, the New Madrid area was sparsely populated, but there was still significant damage to homes and buildings in the area. Today, New Madrid, Missouri is still a rural farming community, however, urbanization did increase drastically in the surrounding areas, including the Memphis, Tennessee, and St. Louis, Missouri metropolitan areas. Geologists closely monitor the area to see if another earthquake to the magnitude of the 1811 and 1812 events are possible. In this episode, we'll examine the historical and present seismology of the area and the chances for future seismic events and how humans settled in the area can prepare for that possibility. Before we start, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home, if you enjoy learning about geography and earth science. New full-length episodes premiere every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and new shorts premiere every Monday and Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's get started. Historically, the geological nature of the area is what's known as the Railfoot Rift, which formed during the late Pre-Cambrian era to Cambrian period around 550 to 500 million years ago. Rifting is a process of the lithosphere being pulled apart or extended. If the rifting is continuous for a long period of time, the lithosphere will start splitting apart into two separate plates, creating what's called the divergent plate boundary. Since convection or heat is involved, mature divergent plate boundaries have earthquake and volcanic activity. A well-known example of a mature divergent plate boundary is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which started splitting Pangaea apart 250 million years ago, in the African Rift Valley, which started splitting apart around 25 million years ago. In the case of the Railfoot Rift, it started to fracture apart, but failed to do so. But it did create a valley and multiple faults on the ground. Then around 300 million years ago, sediment started to fill atop the older Paleozoic or sedimentary rock. Around 100 million years ago, a geological area called the Mississippi Embayment began forming, and at the same time, the North American continent went over the Bermuda hotspot, which was very active at the time. This created uplifting in the area, but North America continued to move westward, and activity calmed down. Afterwards, the land in the embayment began subsiding, and around 80 million years ago, the sea began submerging the embayment, creating certain bioclastic sedimentary rocks such as limestone and chalk. These geological changes ultimately laid the foundation for the modern Mississippi River, which formed thereafter. Currently, the area of the New Madrid seismic zone has a top layer of sediments and sedimentary rocks of younger varying ages, while the deeper older Paleozoic rock layers are where the ancient faults are located. The concern is with the deeper layers, as these faults appear to still be active. From December of 1811 to February of 1812, three severe earthquakes and one aftershock occurred. The most severe of the three was the last one that happened on February 7, 1812. The epicenter for this earthquake was in and around New Madrid, Missouri, while the other two and the aftershocks epicenters were situated in northeastern Arkansas. The February 7th event was estimated to be as strong as an 8.6 on the Richter scale, which would place it in the top tier for earthquakes. The community in New Madrid was destroyed, and St. Louis, Missouri, despite only having a couple thousand people, saw significant damage from the earthquake. The earthquake also created hydrologic differences, including significant changes in the Mississippi River. In fact, the earthquake reversed the current of the river, and this created flooding of adjacent lands and created the Railfoot Lake, a lake in Tennessee which covers 15,000 acres today. Also, within the Mississippi River itself, new channels were created, while others were abandoned. After the major events of 1811 and 1812, multiple more aftershocks occurred, with the last one being around 1817. Fast forward to 212 years later, the new Madrid seismic zone is still of a concern for geologists. The biggest concern is the unknown. Seismically, the type of earthquake associated with the area is what we call an intraplate earthquake, one of which happens within a plate rather than on a plate boundary. 
Generally, most intraplate earthquakes produce small earthquakes, which don't cause too much disruption. But there are times when they could cause large earthquakes, like the New Madrid ones of 1811 and 1812. One of the most recent major intraplate earthquakes was the Virginia earthquake of 2011, which was a 5.8 on the Richter scale and within the Virginia seismic area. This earthquake did damage buildings and infrastructure, including the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., which needed repairs afterwards. Fortunately, no one died, but this earthquake was a surprise and not expected, and typically intraplate earthquakes do happen that way. Geologists agree that a future earthquake will likely occur within the New Madrid seismic zone. In 2009, the United States Geological Survey, also known as the USGS, estimated that an earthquake on par with the 1811-1812 event had a 7-10% to 10 chance of happening in the next 50 years and that there was a 25-50% to 50 chance of a magnitude 6 earthquake happening in the same time frame. In 2014, the USGS increased the risk assessment of the area. With these chances, this is more problematic than ever because of the increased population. Memphis, the closest largest city to the New Madrid seismic zone, wasn't even an incorporated city in 1812. Now the Memphis metropolitan area has over 1.3 million people. In St. Louis, the second closest major city to the seismic zone has a metropolitan population of 2.9 million. In fact, the USGS estimates that if a comparable earthquake to the 1811-1812 earthquake were to occur, it could displace over 7 million people. So, is the region prepared for this possibility? In recent years, both Memphis and St. Louis have been preparing for earthquakes. Both cities have stringent building codes put in place for new buildings. For example, the AutoZone headquarters in Memphis, built in 1995, has a base isolation system, which is said to withstand an earthquake of a magnitude 9. And many other new buildings are retrofitted to protect from earthquakes, as well as older renovated buildings. Both cities have emergency response plans if an earthquake were to occur, which could save thousands of lives. The USGS has monitoring tools in the area to possibly predict future seismic events. Although they can't say exactly when and where an earthquake will occur, they could release updated probability figures, which would help federal, state, and local governments prepare. One problematic issue is associated with the outlying areas within the new Madrid seismic area. Many of these areas are quite rural and farmland. Isolated rural areas may be less prepared for future seismic events, as residential and commercial and agricultural buildings may not be retrofitted for earthquakes. In addition, Locals living in remote areas may not be fully aware of the overall risk. The states of Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Illinois, and Mississippi should raise more awareness to rural residents of the seismic risk so they are prepared. The New Madrid seismic zone will continue to be a high-priority area of research for geologists. The truth is that geologists don't even know all the facts on why the area is prone to earthquakes. The historical and basic geology of the area is well known, but there could be many unknowns below the surface that still have not been discovered. If these unknowns are found someday, geologists could gain a clearer picture of this seismic zone, along with other potentially dangerous interplace seismic zones, such as the Virginia seismic zone. What do you think? If you'd like to leave your opinion, please do so in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching this week's episode. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home. Until next time!